welcome children come we will see the next topic in our 8th chapter body movements ok body movements ok see here take your textbook take page number 71 7 1 ok 71 we discussed many bones and the joints of our skeleton so till now we have discussed about many bones in our body and the joints in our body ok joints of our skeleton ok come we will see the next thing ok go to next page there are some additional parts of the skeleton that are not as hard as the bones and which can be bent these are called cartilage these are called cartilage ok in skeleton in the skeleton ok some more additional parts are there ok what are they called they are called cartilage they are we can bend that we can bend that and it is not that much hard compared to bone ok bone is very hard no and we cannot bend it but this cartilage is what not that much hard like bone and we can bend it ok we can bend it ok see feel your ear feel your ear do you find any hard bony parts that can be bent do you find any bone that can be bent there do not seem to be any bones there no is there any bones in your ear no isn't it is there any bone no do you notice anything different between the ear lobe and the portions above it see do you notice anything different between the ear lobe and the portions above it see here look here this is a what ear lobe the lower part near ear no this part that is ear lobe see above that can you feel anything different this part upper part of the ear ok see if you press it what do you feel what do you feel see this is the ear lobe it is very soft ok see if you take the upper part of the ear ok how do you feel you you do feel something in the upper parts of the ear that is not what as soft as the ear lobe but it is not that much soft like ear lobe but not as hard as bone ok it is not that much hard as well as it is not that much soft this is the cartilage what it is called cartilage ok cartilage is also found in the joints of the body ok it is also found in the joints of the body ok so the soft it is not that much soft it is not that much hard like a bone ok so that part this part is the cartilage what it is called it is soft ok soft bone like structure ok that is the cartilage ok and we can it is also found in the joints see we have seen that our skeleton is made up of many bones joints and cartilage we know no it is made up of many bones joints and cartilage you could feel bend and move many of them you could feel bend and move you can if you touch you can feel the bone that is inside your what hand or a leg or leg ok that you feel no yes see we have learnt about the bones in our body and about joints that help us move in different ways ok so which part helps us to move joints ok what makes the bones move the way they do come we will find it ok see make a fist with one hand bend your arm at the elbow and touch your shoulder with the thumb do you see any change in your upper arm touch it with the other hand do you observe a swollen region e, swollen region is the upper arm this is a muscle what muscle look here see what is this part these are all the muscles ok in between see inside it bones are there and this is the muscle look here the muscle bulged due, due to contraction ok bulged due to contraction 
it becomes smaller in length. Now, bring your arm back to its normal position. What happened to the muscle? Is it still contracted? No, it is now expanded. Okay. See, you can observe similar contraction of muscles in your leg when you wa walked or run. When you walk or run, you can feel contraction of muscles happens. Okay. When contracted, the muscle becomes shorter, stiffer, and thicker. It pulls the bone. Okay. So, when contracted, what will happen to the muscles? The muscles become shorter, stiffer, and thicker, and it pulls the bone. Okay. It pulls the bone. Muscles work in pairs. Okay. When one of them contracts, the bone is pulled in the direction. So, all the muscles work in pairs. So, when one of them contracts, the bone is pulled in that direction. Okay. The other muscle of the pair relaxes. To move the bone in the opposite direction, the relaxed muscle contracts to pull the bone towards its original position. While the first relaxes, a muscle can only pull, it cannot push, it cannot push, it can pull only. Okay. Thus, two muscles have to work together to move a bone. So, what the two muscles, look here, the two muscles should work together to what move a bone. Okay. Two muscles have to work together to move a bone, then only the bone will move. Okay. Okay. Our muscles and bones always required for movement. How do other animals move? See, for the movement, see in human being bones and muscles are there. If we take animals, is it important to have muscles and bones for the movement of animals? How do other animals move? Do all animals have bones? All the animals have bones as well as muscles. What about an earthworm or a Snail, come we will see about that. All these animals are having both bones and muscles. Let us study the manner of movement. That is the gait of some animals. That is nothing but the, what is gait means? The pa pattern how the animal or a person is moving. That is called gait. What? Gait. G-A-I-T. Gait. Okay. Come we will see about that. Okay. So, what? Gait of animals. So, we know now how animal, now we know how the uh, what a movement in body in our human body is occurs that we know. So, in animals and the how the movement is happens it is due to bone or it is due to any what muscles come we will see whether they are having bones or muscles come we will see. See gait of animals ok. Observe an earthworm earthworm ok that you know no moving on soil in a garden gently lift it and place it on a piece of blotting or filter paper observe its movement ok look here this is the earthworm ok then place it on a smooth glass plate or any slippery surface observe its movement now is it easy for it for the earthworm to move on the slippery surface no it will be very difficult for it ok is it different from the torn paper yes in which of the above two surfaces do you find the earth, the earthworm is able to move easily the earthworm can easily move on filter paper or a blotting paper, okay. But it will be very difficult for the earthworm to move on the water, glass plate, because it is very smooth, okay. So, why? Why it cannot move? Come, we will see. See, the body of an earthworm is made up of many rings joined end to end, okay. It is joined end to end, okay. So, the body of an earthworm is made of made up of many rings joined end to end. An earthworm does not have bones, okay. it has muscles which help to extend and shorten the body. During movement, the earthworm first extends the front part of the body, keeping the rear portion fixed to the ground, then it fixes the front end and releases the rear end. See, first it will lift its front part, okay, and what? Fixes the back end to the ground. After that, it what? It fixes the front end to the ground and lifts the back end, okay. If it then shortens the body and pulls the rear and rear end forward, okay. This makes it to 
move forward by a small distance. Okay, repeating such muscle, muscle expansions and contractions. Okay, repeating this type of muscle expansions and contractions, the earthworm can move through soil. Okay, by the expansion and contraction of the muscle. Okay, the earthworm can move through soil. Its body secretes a slimy substance to help the movement. Its body secretes a slimy, slimy substance. Okay, slimy substance to help the movement. How does it fix parts of its body to the ground? Under its body, it has a large number of tiny bristles. Hair like bristles means nothing but hair like water structures. See our bristle, water, a brush tooth brush you take, I, we will call that uh, small, small white uh, part, no, that we call it as bristles, no, yeah. So, tiny bristles means hair like structures, okay. So, under its body, what are all they? It has a large number of tiny bristles, okay, projecting out. The bristles are connected with muscles. The bristles help to get good grip on the ground. So, with the help of these bristles, the earthworm get the grip on the ground, otherwise what will it want able to move? Grip we need, what? Everything need grip to move, no? Yes, that grip is the, what? Earthworm gets it, gets the grip by this tiny bristles, okay? The earthworm actually eats its way through the soil. So, it will eat its way, okay? While going, while moving, also it will eat its, eat. Okay. Its body then throws away the undigested part of the material that eats and also it throws away the undigested part of the material that eats. This activity of an earthworm makes the soil more useful for plants. So, what? This activity makes the plants more useful. Okay. Understood? So, this activity of the earthworm makes the soil more useful to for the plants. In this way, the movement happens in the earthworm. Okay. See, now we will take snail. Look, is what it is? It is a snail. Okay. Observe a snail in your garden or in field. Have you seen the rounder structure it carries on its back? See here. Have you seen the rounder structure that it carries always with it? This is called the shell. This is called the shell. And it is the outer skeleton of the snail. That is the outer skeleton. Okay, that is the outer skeleton of the snail. Okay, come we will see what is that outer skeleton. See, we have skeleton in our body in human being. Do we have skeleton outside of our body? No, no. It is inside our body. Okay, but in snail, it is this part is called the outer skeleton because it is outside of its body. Okay, this is called the shell and it is the outer skeleton of the snail, but it is not made of bones, it is not made of bones. We know skeleton is made of made of bones, but here it is not made of bones. The shell is a single unit and does not help in moving from place to place. Here this skeleton is not made of bones and also it does not help in moving from place to place and it is a single unit. Okay. We know bones helps in moving, no, but here in the snail it won't help for its movement. Okay. It has to be dragged along. See, the snail will carry it away wherever it goes, it will take this outer skeleton, that shell. Place the snail on a glass plate and watch it. When it starts moving, carefully lift the glass plate along with the snail over your head. Observe its movements from beneath. Take it okay, up and see, observe the movement. A thick structure on the head of the snail may come out of an opening. Okay. A thick structure on the head of the snail may come out of an opening in the shell. Okay. Come, we will see. Go to next page. See the shell. The thick structure is its foot. What is that? It is the, its foot made of strong muscles. Now, carefully tilt the glass plate. The wavy motion of the foot can be seen. That is the gait of the snail can be seen. That is the movement. Okay. Is the movement of a snail slow or fast as compared to an earthworm? It is slow. Okay. Compared to an earthworm, the movement of a oh, snail is slow. Okay. Understood. So, in this way, the snail is moving like the earthworm, earthworm 
this snail is also moving with the help of the muscles, okay, muscles. Understood, children. 